Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Hermit Pack. We are going to continue our uh, working with bees here. The next thing I was going to make is an apiary, or actually I'm going to make two apiaries. These are like the same as these bee houses that I have uh, been working with here. And these are coming along fairly well. I've got 16 more drones here that I haven't identified yet, but uh, they came from a couple of rounds of these bees doing their whole breeding, life cycle, whatever you want to call it here. Uh, and they're all stacking, so we know that these drones and those drones are the same, but we didn't think that the queens were the same. Well, they were princesses, they're queens now. Uh, we didn't think they were the same, but turns out they are identical enough, at least, that all of the offspring from both of them stack in here as identical. So, uh, yeah, whenever these two burn out, then I'm going to take the resulting stack here and just split it and do half and half back through there and recycle them again. But, um, I wanted to get another set of these running, so we're going to build an apiary or two. So this, you need impregnated casing in the middle of it. And you build this in a carpenter with any kind of logs in a square. It makes the impregnated casing. But you also need seed oil. All right, so seed oil you have to get from the squeezer with uh, any kind of seed or nuts or whatever rice seeds, coffee seeds, pumpkin seeds, and they all give you basically 10 millibuckets of seed oil. Cherries give you 50. Chestnuts give you 220. So if you have chestnuts from somewhere, they're from one of the forestry trees apparently, same with the cherries, uh, they give you a lot. What is this? Walnuts from forestry. Yeah, I don't have that either. But anyway, we're going with a uh, 10, one of the 10 millibucket options. I'm going to be using beetroot seeds. So each impregnated casing here, you need 250, so that's 25 seeds on the uh, 10 each options. So 25 of those. And I'm going to be making two of these, so I need 50 seeds to go into the squeezer. Um, real quick, here is the recipe for the squeezer. We've got the sturdy casing, which is the bronze ingots of any type, around, and then 10 on the sides instead of uh, bronze or copper like the other machines were. This one is 10 with any kind of block of glass on the top and bottom. And that makes your squeezer. So I've already made it. It's right here. There's a squeezer. It's hooked up to our little uh, improv power system here. And the sun's down. Perfect. Okay. These guys are not going to be working at night. They don't work at night if it's too dark or in the rain because they're not tolerant flyers. Oh, this one looped around again. Put this guy back through there. Drop off that stuff. Um, okay, so... Eh, let's go sleep this off real quick. I had to move the bed over again. I got stuck in the wall. It's annoying when that happens. So I moved the bed over one space. Sometimes whenever you uh, try to get out of the bed, after it's done with the sleeping thing, uh, you try to get out of the bed and it puts you on one side or the other. And uh, sometimes it chooses the wrong way and sticks you part way in a block or something. I don't know why, but it won't let you get out of the bed at that point. It's like, nope, you don't have anywhere to go. Okay, so back to the squeezer. So I'm going to put 50 beetroot seeds in here. And this thing is, I think, being hit with the torturino right now. I don't think it's actually that fast. But I have a fluid conduit here extracting from the squeezer 
and going into the carpenter. So the carpenter is getting the seed oil that we need. And I'm going to go ahead and tell this thing the pattern of stuff we're making so it knows what to do. And okay, it's done with all that. So we're going to put the wood in here and it's going to make two of these. Perfect. And I'm going to clear that back out just so I don't accidentally make stuff. All right, so we have our casings. And then we need any kind of slab across the top and any kind of plank around the bottoms. So let's go. I'm just using oak wood for that because I had a bunch of that laying around. So those go there. Those go there. And like so. And we have two apiaries. Now these... I think I'm going to put back here in the swamp. Oh, I've been playing around with the uh, moving wand a bit more. You can move the uh, Pam's Harvest Craft uh, fruit tree fruits. Like, see that harvest it, and you can put it back down. And you can place these, like, anywhere, and they still grow. So, really good option if you have a bunch of these fruit trees of the same kind or you want to, like, condense them all into one little area. Uh, you can actually just grab them and put them, like, on the wall somewhere. But I left them on the tree because, you know, that's where they look right. Uh, and these gardens, I made a grid of these. There was, like, a big giant pile of them back there somewhere that's just been growing unchecked. So I made a grid of these here. They will also continue to grow on their own. And over here, I kind of decorated, because I got bored waiting on bees, I decorated this area here with a bunch of these uh, frost gardens. And a few of them have grown, so we can actually harvest them. So I've got this line here going across, that line there two blocks up, and that line there two blocks up from that one. So if any of these spread and grow, to any of the adjacent blocks on the other layers, then I'm harvesting them. All this over here, I'm going to continue this all the way around and uh, put a few over here as well. This little like cove thing, I just decided I'm going to dress this up a little bit and put them all around here. And all of these, actually, at least most of them, were under these trees over here. They were all just kind of piled in down here. So I, one at a time, moved every single one of these over here, waiting on bees to breed. A little bit of a lengthy process. But anyway, um, so the apiaries are going to go back here in the swamp before I get distracted again. Let's make sure we are in swampland, yes. And let's just put them... There's already some flowers around here, so it's not a bad area. Not there. Let's put right there. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so in these, we're going to start breeding our swamp bees. Uh, marshy. Oh, that was weird. Looks like there was just a pack of Endermen standing in there. Uh, let's see. So we're going to get the pristine marshy princess here. We get two of those. And all of the marshy drones. It's like I've got four, enough for four or twice. Let's get our analyzer. Uh, these stack, so I might as well put them all in at once. Uses only one honey, I checked. So these, they want... We can put them in the different sections here. I forgot to mention this before. Uh, you can put these in the different little um, Roman numeral uh, boxes here, and it gives you more information. So humidity, damp. They want it to be damp. They have a tolerance of zero either direction. Uh, they also want a normal climate tolerance uh, 
hotter or colder by one, it, I think is what that means. Third box is the produce that you want or that you can get from the bee. Fourth box is the possible mutations that you have discovered in breeding them with other types. And you get that by using like a marshy drone with a wintry princess or a marshy drone with a meadows princess, something like that if you uh, cross the different types together. Uh, and the fifth box is the very specific scientific classification of these bees specifically. Which is more or less just for flavor text as far as I know. I don't think it has any impact anywhere in the game. It's just random information. Uh, let's also go ahead and analyze the princesses before I forget to do that. And we will compare this one with that one. Seems to be identical. So let's go ahead and drop these off and get them running. Yeah, that only seems to be a little bit slower than uh, the bee houses with the torturinos. Alright, so there are already flowers around here. There's already some mushrooms around. Which were their flower type, if you didn't uh, see that a minute ago. Their flower type is mushroom. But I think, like the way that the snow worked with the other ones, they don't really actually care about mushrooms. They just want the flowers to be here. But just in case, uh, there are some mushrooms there. Anyway, we will leave these guys to their own devices. And uh, so that's how you make your own bee houses and apiaries. And the apiaries are better than bee houses. Bee houses are like the basic bottom of the barrel, trying to think of some more bee words, building blocks of the bee process. Like they're the cheapest also. You just go pick them up from a village. Um, but the apiaries have a slot that you can put frames in, and I'll go over the frames sometime later, but they go in these little slots here, and they have different effects depending on which ones you put in there. Um, there's like a void frame that you can like delete certain items with. There's a frame that increases uh, the uh, lifetime of them. There's one that makes them produce more of their specialty item more often. Things like that. It's just modifiers and uh, bonuses to your bees and they have durability so they run down over time and you have to make new ones. Anyway, just a little quick... Oh, I cleared out the rice here by the way. Uh, I'm gonna put something else here. I just haven't decided what yet. So if you have anything you want me to grow in a farm specifically, let me know. I'm open to suggestion. Uh, I've got tons of farm space here. I'm just not using it all. And also, this is up to 1199 now. It went up like 30 durability points by itself, just kind of sitting around uh, after I repaired it. So the durability is going up. The rest of it I haven't checked Anyway, so that's um, end stone on there is interesting to say the least. And we're up to eight nether stars in here. So this thing's been working away. I'll probably put the Torturino back there just to make it run better because it doesn't seem to be affecting... Ow. Stop it. doesn't seem to be affecting these like I thought it would. This one's going pretty quick. Yeah, okay, they're going fairly quick. It's just starting to be nighttime again. Got eight in there and four in there. Okay. 
I think they were fairly close in number earlier, but now they're diverging slightly. Uh, anyway, uh, that's about all I did for the bees, but while I was waiting on that and decorating and just kind of killing time while they worked, I was messing around with these rings from Actually Editions and uh, the Ring of Magnetizing, which I was going to compare to our item our electromagnet here. It runs on RF. Here's the recipe. You need Inori crystals, which are iron ingots, and you have to shoot them with the old uh, atomic reconstructor. I have it set up here again. Um, so basically four iron. These are redstone, pieces of redstone with the laser and lapis. And the ring in the middle is four gold, four iron, and a glowstone. So this thing, I compared it to the electromagnet, and it is a lot weaker. The items don't travel to you as fast. And if you're, like, walking by and it tries to come to you and doesn't make it, it'll just fall on the ground again. So you can end up actually spreading items across the ground everywhere if you're, like, you know, flying or running around. Uh, the items aren't quite attracted to you enough to really get there as well. So I'm not using that. I'm just kind of leaving it here in this table. Uh, these rings, the other rings, are potion rings. They give you the buff that the potion... Well, they each have a potion effect, basically, and they give you that potion effect while you're holding the ring. Uh, you need a basically a block of diamond. These are um, reconstructed diamonds with the reconstructor. So you need a block of diamonds. This is for both of them. Uh, you also need another ring for both of them and a water bottle for both. The difference being that each one uses different potion ingredients that you'd expect kind of to see in the potion with the effect that you're getting from the ring. So the ring of regeneration uses four gas tears. Oh, you also use the nether warts. That's like if you were starting your potion in the uh, brewery, the brewing stand. You start with the water bottle and the nether wart. And then the secondary ingredient is gas tears for regeneration potions, and that's why it has them in there. And it takes four, because the regeneration ring gives you regeneration. But not while it's in your inventory. Not You can't put it in any of the bobble slots. Not while it's in your offhand. It actually has to be on your hotbar in your main hand and it applies the effect continuously while you're holding it. So I guess one good thing you can do with this is put it in your offhand and wait until you need it and then hit your switch button and switch over to it. So like say sword and ring go along yada 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 kill stuff oh no I took some damage switch over to the ring regenerate your HP while you you know dodge around for a little bit swap back to your sword and wreck some more face. So that's one good use of that. Uh, there is an upgraded version of these. Each one has a advanced option. I'm not sure if it just increases the uh, duration of the effect or the strength of the effect or if it allows it to work when it's not in your main hand. I haven't got to mess around with them because they take these ender stars the Ender Stars are Nether Stars, which I'm not even worried about. Black Quartz got a ton of that. Prismarine, which actually I went and found a Ocean Temple. Uh, that'll be later. So I've got plenty of Prismarine shards. Also, you can use the Reconstructor to make these out of Quartz, uh, Nether Quartz, if you wanted to. The only thing I'm missing is this fourth item, Dragon's Breath. Because while I was fighting the dragon, even though I took the bottles with me to get Dragon's Breath from the dragon fight, the dragon never used its breath while I was fighting it. Because I never, or at least I never noticed it. I'll have to go back and look at the video. But I never saw it, or I would have picked some up. And this is why, because it's used in a few uh, interesting things that I kind of wanted to use it on. Well, not so much these generators. Simply generators. I remember using the culinary generator quite a bit in uh, other other game, uh, other mod packs. 
Uh, but yeah, the Ender Star, definitely I need to make a couple of those. And then for brewing, there are the lingering potions. I wanted to try a few of those out with different uh, mobs and things. And the Apothecary Cauldron uses these to make uh, lingering condensed potions and different things. So, yeah, I wanted to pick some up while I was out there, but I didn't... I guess I just didn't notice it, or it didn't happen. Uh, anyway, the other ring here is the Ring of Invisibility. This gives you the invisibility effect, but uh, like the invisibility potions, mobs still know you're there if you're wearing armor and stuff. So you have to take your armor off. And uh, so then, let me F5 this. I'm like a magnet with wings and a ring there just kind of like running around and it does work mobs don't know I'm here the angel ring still works because it's just in my inventory like they'll look at me see the, the zombie knows I'm here but he won't attack me they'll look at you see the witch is kinda looking at me they know I'm here but they don't care now if you actually bump into them then they, yeah, see, now he knows I'm here. So, if you bump into them uh, wearing armor, you attack them, something like that, then they know you're there and they'll start tracking you again. So, that's the Ring of Invisibility. Again, kind of a very specific uh, situation of use. If you just want to, like, get from point A to point B and not have to fight a bunch of junk, that's what you want to use. But if you bump into things, then uh, you have to worry about them again. Or if you're wearing armor. so uh, Probably good for the nether if you don't want to get gassed fireballed or uh, shot at by a bunch of blazes all the time. It's a good use of that, I guess. Anyway, um, that's going to basically wrap up the episode. I'll have to go check on our little swamp bees here in a little while. Leave me some comments down below. Leave a like if you're enjoying the series. And until next time, thanks for coming by. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. And uh, I'll see you next time.